A contact sheet is a series of pictures with no logical sequence. The eye deals in sensations, not in logic. A contact sheet isn't a film telling a story, but a journey. Perhaps you hope to discover secrets as you search through my contact prints, but you'll find only a groping, a series of failures, false notes discarded in the search for the right one. I'm often asked, did you get what you wanted? How should I know what I wanted? A photo is an encounter, a surprise. I often take photographs as I stroll about, but also when I'm after a story. It's the 1st of July, 1962, and I'm walking the streets of Algiers just before independence. Suddenly, at the corner of a street, my stroll turns into a mad race. The disorder and cacophony of a big demonstration. How can you frame a photo in such a chaotic outburst of faces, banners, outstretched arms? I move to the head of the procession to get in front, to face the faces, the stares. Kappa was right. If the photos are not good, it's because you aren't close enough. So I walk backwards. The faces, the shouts come closer. The click of the shutter. I feel I'm photographing better. Eyes full of dust and sun, images jostle each other in a wild melee as I vibrate in sympathy with the crowd. I've had other moments of exhilaration in other crowds. Here in Beijing, Tiananmen Square in 1965. A million men and women are marching in close formation with just one order, one sound. Demonstrators and police are together on the side of authority. This can be read on the faces, on the banners. The sound swells, the excitement too. But I'm not recording sound here. Let's not confuse senses. I'm looking for a picture a photo to say why these people are shouting against whom. As the shouts reach their height, portraits of Mao and Ho Chi Minh, pictures within a picture, appear side by side in my viewfinder. This is the right photo, the one I've been waiting for. Drawn into the wake of a cause, at the time, simple and self-evident, I find myself in Washington one day in October 1967. The Indian summer sun is shining down on a huge and joyous march for peace in Vietnam. By their hundreds and thousands, blacks and whites, girls and boys, dare to lay siege to the Pentagon, fortress and symbol of the most powerful army in the world. That day, American youth puts a beautiful face on America. I shoot away in a frenzy. Night falls. I'm finishing my films when this young girl with a flower, facing the bayonets alone, draws the symbol of American youth in my viewfinder. It's the last frame of my last film. It has had good luck. It's been all round the world, while the others have stayed in the bottom of a drawer. Now, I'm rereading this contact sheet like a notebook. Let me choose another photo. Masked faces and outstretched bayonets form a sinister pattern in pictures. This is a grim face shown by the American government that day. But the flower isn't there, only the bad men. The first choice really was the right one.
1953, I leave Lyon for Paris. These are my first steps in the capital and in photography. With my Leica and only one film, I'm strolling near the Eiffel Tower, which is being repainted. I suddenly notice these paintbrush-bearing acrobats, and wishing to see them more closely, I climb up. Hanging onto the little spiral staircase with only my 50mm lens, I can't take close-ups or wide-angle shots, so I have only one choice left, that of the right moment. These constraints, these limited means, were my good luck, in fact. And the choice was easy with this contact sheet, which isn't always the case. The best photo strikes the eye, as the right chord strikes the ear. I've seen the world, but I'm not a globetrotter. I don't even think that travel suits me. I'm more of a stroller. I travel at my own speed. In 1955, it took me six months by road to get to India, where I lived for a year. This is Benares on the banks of the Ganges. Another crowd, but not shouting this time. In the vast murmur of silence and prayer, there is harmony in contemplation. The pilgrim, spreading a sari out in the sun, is creating an ephemeral sculpture in the light. Here in India, everything is black and white but the white is dominant. Khomeini has returned to Tehran. From a roof, I watch the chador-clad women's hysteria as they throw all they wear beneath their veil at the imam. black veil or white sari, draperies are always beautiful, always photogenic. I like the walls with their graffiti and slogans, beautiful above all when we don't understand them. I never got close to Khomeini, but I met his face, his stare, painted on a large billboard in a street in the Tehran suburbs. More walls and draperies, two eyes, two veiled women. Like India, Iran is a black and white country, but here black is dominant. On May the 12th, 1987, at 1 p.m. sharp, Millions of television viewers are waiting for Klaus Barbie to appear. In the Lyon Palais de Justice, the lawyers wait too. Suddenly, Barbie appears in my viewfinder. I know he's a torturer and a killer. My camera has never been a more effective shield. I press tensely on the shutter release. 44 years before, here in Lyon, so many resistance comrades, close relatives, were tortured and shot by the butcher of Lyon. Now he is only a few feet away. He looks a gentleman, courteous, reserved, almost vulnerable. You trust him with your children. But can the picture be trusted? That evening, in the laboratory, on the contact sheet, I discover something I hadn't seen. The respectful looks centering on the accused as if he were a star. During the trial, I met another person, 
Julien Favet, the only surviving witness of the easier roundup ordered by Barbie. 43 children, 5 to 15 years old, thrown alive into the flames at Auschwitz. Favet is a former farmhand, illiterate. With his deformed eye and twisted mouth, he could really be frightening. And yet, he's a gentle and sensitive man, obsessed by the truth, revolted by injustice. He really must beware of appearances. Covering current events can be exhilarating and supply a fine raw material. But for me, photography is usually a solitary activity with long hours of walking and waiting. I photograph people and events of every kind, but streets, villages and country are my favorite places. Sunday in a Touraine village, the celebration of the 150th anniversary of the Pont Levois Fire Brigade. Captain Bonal is conducting the music with the master's hand. No need for a caption. Clearly, this is France. These two sisters, one a modiste, the other a dressmaker, René and Cécile Alouis, have been dressing identically for 80 years. I take four or five shots of the same scene. Then, with a step forward, the eye moves a few inches and everything is changed for me. The right photo is here. These small details have made the difference. I choose from the contact sheet, and once I have chosen the photo, I forget it a little, and it lives its own life. 